Good morning, Dragonflies. Mr. Madsen here, and Kelso joined me this morning. Today I want to tell you a story, and it's normally a story that I would come to your classroom and tell you when I tell you about the things that counselors do. This year, since um, we are having to do school online, I can't really come to your classroom and do what I normally do. So I'm having to be creative about um, letting you know what I'm here for and, and what counselors do at school. So counselors are special teachers and we come to classrooms. And in this case, you're gonna have a classroom that you're gonna visit that's my classroom. It's the counselor corner and it'll be um, specific for grade levels. So each grade level will have their own classroom. And I'll have different um, lessons on there and activities for you. Um, like I mentioned in my intro video, if you've watched it, um, I'll have the read alouds that I did last spring and I'll add some to that. I've got some new ones that I want to add. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, and if you haven't uh, checked out those read alouds. I encourage you to check them out. I've added some music to them and some sound effects to make them really fun and and good. And so um, I'm kind of happy about how those have turned out. Um, normally during the school year, I'll have chess club up for second grade through fifth grade. Um, still thinking about how to do chess club. Last spring I did chess puzzles and a lot of you participated in that, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so I anticipate doing chess puzzles again, um, but I'm trying to figure out a way that we might be able to do um, some sort of um, chess club. And so I'm still thinking about that, trying to toss around some ideas, and, and I'll keep you posted with um, if that's gonna happen or not, okay? But after I talk about what counselors do in your class, I usually tell you a story involving this rope. And those of you that have heard my story before know that this rope represents the hero of the story's feelings, okay? For those of you that are new to Duncan, um, I just want you to think about the story. And as I tell it, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna tie a knot in this rope every time our hero experiences something negative or what, what we would call um, a, a hard feeling or negative feeling, like anger, frustration, sadness. So certainly I'm not gonna tie a, a knot for a happy feeling. Those don't cause knots in our rope, okay? And I'm gonna reference how flexible our hero is in his feelings, basically, how he's feeling um, by how few knots he has in. So let's get started, all right? So I want you to use your imagination and think about um, the first day of school. And if you were the, this was your first day of school, okay? The hero of our story is a boy, and that's just easier for me because I'm a boy. It's easier for me to talk about a boy. So our hero is really excited for the first day of school. First day of school. And some of you might think, well, yeah, I was kind of excited, but I was also nervous. And I was maybe a little bit scared. I wasn't scared. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Our hero was excited. He feels pretty confident about his computer skills and his ability to join meetings for morning meeting and go to Google Classroom. And so our hero, he decided that the first morning meeting, today's meeting, he was going to wear his brand new Duncan Dragonfly t-shirt. You can see I have a Jogathon one that was from 2014 on. This is one of my favorite shirts. I just It's comfy. I like it. So that's what I wore today. But our hero, he's so excited. He jumps out of bed and he goes over to his dresser where all of his shirts and clothes are kept. And he opens the drawer and it's heavy looking for that shirt. The shirt that he wants, the new Dragonfly, Duncan Dragonfly shirt, isn't on top. So he thinks, huh, I thought I just had it. So he starts to pull his shirts out and he's pulling them out of the drawer and he's throwing them up in the air and they're landing on the floor, which is probably gonna be a problem later. 
but he's not worried about that right now. He needs to find this shirt. His morning meeting is about to happen and he's got to eat breakfast and get ready. So he's looking for the shirt. He pulls out all of the shirts in the drawer. Drawer. No dragonfly shirt. Where's my shirt? I just had it. He turns around, looks at his floor. Maybe he grabbed it and didn't see it. He can't find the shirt. Then he remembers. Oh yeah, I wore it last night. I put it on to see how it would look, turned on my camera and thought, yep, this is gonna look pretty good. And then my mom called me to dinner. And that wasn't a problem, but the problem was, what was for dinner? Do you know what it was? It was spaghetti. And you know, spaghetti can be messy. And our hero was eating spaghetti with this dragonfly shirt on and it spilled and went all down the front of his shirt. And that caused a little feeling there. There's one knot in his rope now. It's not a big knot though, so he's still flexible. But any idea what that feeling might be? Well, if some of you were thinking disappointed, that would be, that would be a good feeling to label this one. He's disappointed. He can't wear the shirt that he wanted to wear for the first morning meeting to see his friends. So after thinking that through, he's like, okay, I'll just wear it later this week when we have another morning meeting. We're gonna have them every day at nine o'clock. So he just grabs another shirt that's laying on the floor, because that's where they are, and he puts it on and he decides to go to breakfast. Starts to head to breakfast and on his way down the hall, he thinks, you know, you know what would make me feel better, Kelso? Is if I had something with that special ingredient. You know the one that begins with an S and ends in ugger? That's right, sugar. Yeah, so our hero decides it's a Captain Crunch cereal day. So he gets to the kitchen. He goes to where all the cereals are kept in the cupboard. And the good cereals are always way up high on the top shelf. So our hero drags a chair over and he stands up on the chair real careful and he opens the cupboard and there it is. And he grabs the Captain Crunch and he pulls it down and he steps down and he goes over to the table and he's like, it kind of feels funny. He opens it up and guess what he found? It's empty. completely empty. Somebody put the empty cereal box up in the cupboard and pretended that it was still full. Who does that? Oh, you can imagine what feeling that would be for our hero, right? Yeah, if you were thinking frustrated, frustrated, maybe mad, angry. Yeah wondering who did that all of those feelings right could be that feeling but it's not enough of a feeling to stop him from being flexible so our hero he was hoping this year to be a part of the green team and if you know if you're a part of the green team you're always thinking about how to reduce reuse and recycle okay and so our hero decides he can be responsible and he flattens that recycle that box of cereal that's empty and he recycles it. Then he's thinking, I gotta have breakfast. So he looks back to the cupboard and right at eye level was a box that was orange. He'd never seen it before. He pulls it out and it says, Wheaties, breakfast of champions. champions. Our hero wants to be a champion. Don't you wanna be a champion? Yeah, everybody wants to be a champion. So our hero, he has the Wheaties. He loves them. He's never had them before, but that's gonna be his go-to cereal every morning because he wants to be a champion. But he still has these feelings that he didn't talk to anybody about. Okay, and we'll talk more about that. But when we don't talk about our feelings, they stay with us and they stay with us throughout the day until we talk about them. So, so our hero, finishes breakfast, puts his dishes away, puts the cereal away, and decides it's time for my morning meeting. So he goes to get his Chromebook, pulls the Chromebook out, 
opens the lid, nothing happens. What's going on? Why isn't this working? He pushes the power button, nothing. Then he realized, my Chromebook's dead. The battery died. Ah! Uh-oh, that was another knot. That was kind of like panic. Like, the meeting's gonna start in just a couple minutes and I don't have any power. So our hero starts to look around. Where's the power cord? I know I put it here somewhere. It's gotta be here somewhere. He finds the power cord. He plugs it in. All of a sudden, his Chromebook lights up. He's like, yes, I can get into the meeting. So, so he turns it on, he logs in, and he opens up the morning meeting. There's his teacher and all of his friends, and he's really excited. And remember, he's still pretty flexible because he's only had a few things happen this morning. Not a lot, okay? And he sees his friends and he's saying hi to his friends. He's saying hi to his teacher. And, and you know, Mr. Duvall or Mr. Dolan or me, Mr. Madsen or Mrs. Moran, we might be in your meeting. It's always a surprise. We're in different meetings at different times. Also, our instructional assistants, people who are usually outside of the playground, they might be in your meeting. Lots of people. Even Mrs. Morelli sometimes comes into a meeting or Mrs. Behunin or Mrs. Dodge. Lots of adults come in. And so our hero's kind of excited, like, who's the adult gonna be today that's in our meeting? Who's the special guest? Yeah, it's kind of cool. So the teacher starts out saying, well, let's have everyone share something about their weekend because it was the weekend, it's Monday. So our hero raises his hand, he's waiting, waiting, waiting. But you know, our morning meetings are only 30 minutes, right? And most of our classes have about 24 kids in them. So not everybody gets to share. And guess what? Our hero didn't get called on to share. What feeling would that be? Yeah, if you're thinking sad, yeah, he really wanted to share about his weekend and um, all the things that he did with his friends, but he didn't get a chance. His teacher says, hey, you know, if we have time at the end, I'll make sure that everyone gets a chance. And so he's got that little bit of hope, but, but he's still feeling pretty sad. But look, he's still flexible. It's not enough of a feeling to stop him. So he goes on, he takes a big deep breath because he knows that helps. And then he listens to his teacher and his teacher talks about today we're going to do math and that they're going to have to log in to do their math assignment and there's going to be activities for them to do and so he's like taking notes and he's got paper and pencil and he's he's taking notes and i'm going to do everything just right because i want to make a good impression and i want to start this year off right and he's trying to be really responsible so and if, after he logs off the morning meeting ends he didn't get a chance to share he decides, okay, I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that math right now so I'm ready when we reconnect to be able to do my math. Okay, so our hero is really organized this year. I don't know about you, but he's really organized. He put everything in his backpack. Okay, and so he's got all of his assignments in his backpack. So he pulls out his backpack and he pulls out his math book and he starts to log on and see what the assignment is and what they're learning about. And he sees, oh, it's a review from last year. Okay, I can do this. So he does the math, gets done. He decides, hmm, I don't want to lose this. So he puts it back in his backpack and zips it up because it'll be right here when I'm ready. So he's ready for the next meeting. So he can take some time. He decides he's gonna go play his game for a little bit and just kind of relax that way since he can't go outside. And pretty soon, it's time. It's time for his meeting. So he goes back to his Chromebook and he logs in and he gets he gets on the computer and his teacher's talking about, you know, how many of you had a chance to do the assignment? He raises his hand, I did mine, I did mine. And she starts to call on different students. This time, his teacher calls on him. But guess what? His screen freezes.
None of you have had that happen, right? What feeling would that be? That is like, really. Ah! First, his Chromebook battery died, and now his screen freezes. He can't answer. So he frantically decides, oh yeah, I, I guess I've got to restart. So he restarts his Chromebook, okay? He logs back into the meeting. His teacher says, oh, it's so good to see you again. What happened? Did your screen freeze? And he's like, yeah, my screen froze. So he goes, okay, do you want to share now? So he's, yeah, I want to share. So he turn, unmutes his mic, and then he realizes, I don't have my math in front of me. Just a second, I got to get it. And so he goes and grabs his backpack, and he pulls it up, and the zipper's stuck. And he's trying and trying and trying, and everybody's waiting, and he's feeling this pressure, which causes more anxiety. And just then he pulls it really hard, and everything flies out of his backpack. And he's like, and then everybody on the, on the, the meeting looks at him, and they all point, and they all start to laugh. What's that feeling? Yeah, that's embarrassment. That's the worst when people laugh at you. Yeah. Is our hero very flexible anymore? Not really. He doesn't really have any rope to work with, does he? It's all one big knot. It's all those feelings. And it's really the beginning of the day. This can happen to anyone. It can happen not only to kids, but it happens to adults. It happens to parents and teachers and principals and vice principals and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas. It happens to everyone, best friends. Yeah. Well, some of you know, because you've heard me tell this story before, there's a simple way to take care of these knots and get flexible again. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, just untie them, right? Yeah. But... The problem with feelings are, is that you have to talk about them, okay? And here's the catch. You gotta find someone that you trust. Hopefully an adult, but a friend would work too. And all you have to do is talk about those feelings. Talk about how you didn't get to wear your favorite shirt, that your computer wasn't charged, that your screen froze, all of those things. And all of the adult that's listening to you, all they have to do is listen. They don't have to say, oh, you know, next time you should have this cord ready and next time you should do this. They don't say that at all. They just listen. Because what happens when someone listens to us and truly listens to us and we get our feelings out and we feel understood, we feel better. And so pretty soon after just telling about all those things that happened, all those knots come undone and we start to feel better about ourselves and about what we can do. And this time right now, when we're having to do school online and last week we had all the wildfire smoke, it just seems like things are happening and happening and happening that are just causing lots of feelings. So I would encourage you that if you haven't talked to anybody about the feelings you're having, you're probably still tied up in knots. And you need to find an adult that you trust, or a good friend, or an older brother, older sister, grandma, grandpa, aunt, or uncle. Anyone like that, that can listen so that you can take care of these knots. I hope that you will find someone that you can trust. You know that you can always, if we were at school, you could always come see me too, okay? and um, you can talk to your teachers. It's a little more challenging now to do those things, but we're all here for you and we wanna be available to you. And you can talk to each of us. You just have, we just have to set it up. So with that, I want you to remember to share your feelings with people you trust so that you can remain flexible. All right, have a great rest of the week and I'll see you soon.